All right, all right, all right. It's Jared here from Crypto Plan. How's everyone going? I really hope you're okay. We had some amazing weather here this weekend in Ireland, and uh, hence why I've been off the channel. But I'm back, and I'm back with a vengeance because I've been thinking hard. I've been thinking hard about what to talk about because I don't know about you, but have you been just noticing that since the big Bitcoin correction and, you know, alt, you know the altcoin following Bitcoin, it's just been a little bit of a zigzag, a little bit of a seesaw and a little bit indecisive. And I just want to wonder, I, I want to wonder if you out there as the, the conscious, you know, representative for me of the market, uh, have you been indecisive? Have you been thinking about buying and selling a lot? Have you been buying and selling or have you just been holding strong? Because I've been reading a lot of books lately uh, by Jim Rickards. And I don't know if you all know who Jim Rickards is, but Jim Rickards is a very experienced analyst of markets and not just from you know stocks or equities or whatever, from a global macro perspective and, and a psychological perspective. And anyway, I just heard one line in his book today, uh, his book Aftermath, and it was like, markets find it hard to price in indecisiveness. And because right now, with Bitcoin having corrected, with, you know, all this sureness, you know, originally since, you know, since MicroStrategy and Square and all these institutional players were in the game and then Tesla pulls out of the game and, you know, there's a bit of fart and a bit of kind of nonsense going on, uh, there is an indecision in the market and you can kind of feel it. You can feel it in the market, you can see it in the charts and the market finds it hard to price that in. And that, that, that has not only just made me more bullish, it's just made me realize to have a look again and just to see that we are at a turning point. And this, if you're not in crypto right now, is the best time to get into crypto. And especially some of the coins that I'm going to be pointing out today, XRP, ZRX, Dash, these old school coins that used to be in the top 10, top 20 market cap that have been kind of pushed down, you know, to, to lower than they're used to being, they're going to come back and they're going to come back with a vengeance. And I'm going to draw out that case for you right now. And just, you know, the reasons why we are still in a bull market. We have not even really been in a bearish trend inside a bull market. It is just a correction. And I'm going to outline that for you. And I'm going to start with XRP because I think XRP is going to lead the way. A lot of people are saying, and it'll be all tied to the SEC case and whatever, whatnot, but the market sentiment will drive it. And that's when, you know, is it the rumors of the SEC case coming through or is it the SEC case coming through that causes the charts to move? No one will really know, but I do feel out there there's a lot of chat about it. At the end of the day, I like the charts, I look at the charts, and I'm going to look at the long-term trend in the charts, and especially the things that were happening before the SEC lawsuit. So stick with me on this one. Um, I'm going to try and make it fairly quickly, uh, you know, wrap it up fairly quickly. We're going to start on XRP. You can see on this chart a long-term uptrend, right? So when you draw trend lines, three points of contact. So we've got a couple of wicks there a wick here in March and a wick here with the whole SEC thing, right? So that, you know, that SEC event gave us a long-term, long-term uptrend line, right? So these, this, you know, for me, when the market dips below that line, we're back into a bear market, you know, so we're, you know, that's scary time. So we haven't got anywhere close to that since, um, we have a new uptrend line that we've been following very nicely, you know, even with this kind of turnaround here. But what I am mostly focused on is this downtrend line. So during the bear market, we followed this, you know, cup correction, you know, the, the kind of cup correction or the arc or whatever you want to call it. So, you know, a good few touches on the left hemisphere and a good few touches on the right hemisphere, you know, the overcorrection here, the SEC nonsense. Uh, but the main thing is this downtrend line. So from all-time highs, one touch, two touch, three touch. 
breakout back test, right? So this is something that I'm going to show you in a lot of charts. You know, it hasn't happened in every single chart as perfect as this, but the reason why when XRP just recently dipped below 70 cents was the best time to buy XRP ever, you know, well, in this bull market anyway, is, is the reason that, you know, this this thing is going to explode, you know, like all this has happened. So, you know, people, people FOMO'd in up here, you know, people held in here, sold in here, bought back in. So there's a lot of people that have held it for a long time. This gets boring, this gets boring, this gets boring, you know, a bit of hope here, real lot of hope here, and then dreams shattered. So a lot of people sell out, but there's still some people that have held on, right? And then it pumps up, it holds on, they might buy a little bit more, then it pumps up here, and then it doesn't go any higher. And then the rest of them get bored. So by now, by this move here, every single weak hand is definitely out of the game. You know, all of this action here is the process of defining who wants to hold this thing for the extreme last 10% of the market, which is 90% of the move, right? So that's what's going on here. So let's just zoom in a little bit closer. We have had a bounce off off this flip of resistance we've got this arc in play so there's there's a couple of things we want to see um by you know definitely by the end of november breaking all-time highs but i'm more concerned with this steeper trend line here and i want to see the thing bounce off it and i want to see it bounce hard and i believe that is going to happen i don't have any i don't have any like evidence or backing or you know this is just my opinion but i believe that one thing that is going to happen is XRP is going to drive, you know, the 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 alt the part of the alt season, which is you know things like Dash and the, you know these older altcoins to really break through all time highs and then continue onwards, right? So I'm just going to show you something now um, to show you what should happen once this back test of the downtrend line happens and then it goes into all time high. So we're on the Bitcoin chart here. So same deal again. All time high from the last bull cycle. Two touches there, a couple of touches there. So downtrend line, breakout in July, back test, tap off, fires to the upside. It did not look back, right? I'm not saying that XRP is going to do that. I'm not saying XRP is going to go up in a straight line but it is in play. And you can see even Bitcoin, you know, as bearish as it has been for the last, and we're on a weekly chart, two weeks. As bearish as it's been for two weeks. Look how many weeks before that it was bullish, right? You know, it was all upside. And it's pretty much, you know, to, to follow the pattern of the arc, you know, where is it? a good couple of touches on the left-hand side of the hemisphere, only had one touch on the right hand side of the hemisphere so far. So this is our second touch on the right hand side of the hemisphere. It needs to be there. It needs to test. It needs to be there to bounce off, right? So case number one of downtrend line, breakout, back test, lots of upside action, right? I'm going to go to example number three. Cardano, all time high. Didn't have as many tests here, you know, like a deeper bear market, but touch, touch, you know, a bit of action there, breakout, double back test, and then what happened? Cardano just flew on out of there, right? So we all know the story with Cardano. If you've held Cardano since down here, very good time. I had a fair chunk of it down in this region, you know, held it most of the way, you know, and have traded into other things. Now, ZRX, probably the most similar to the XRP chart. One, two touches, three touches, four, five, six touches, breakout and back test, right? So uh, going back to XRP, long downtrend line, double touch, breakout, back test, right? So ZRX, very similar, just done a big reach down. I think in the same note, ZRX is going to do massive things in the short term to the upside if it follows this arc if it follows this steeper trend line so well more importantly this arc i think you know this arc's been in play one two three touches on the right hemisphere that's enough and then bang bull time
coming over to Dash, are we seeing a similar pattern here? You know, kind of drawn the trend line a bit lower. One, two, three, well, one, one, two, three, four, five touches, breakout, back test. Then it's kind of been following the arc, but got broke out again, back test on the arc. So once again, the arc's in play. You know, we've still got this, this lower trend line here, you know, this longer term, deeper trend line, which is telling us we're above that. So we're, we're in the bull market, we're in an uptrend when you know, nothing bad has happened to the old season. So once again, bullish, just some indecision, just some fear, just some doubt. And, uh, you know, once again, Dash, the best price right now, $183 for a Dash. You know, I was accumulating back here just under a hundred. Like if, if I had a FOMO into there, like, well, I, I just like right now to, to be this late in the market to get Dash for 183 and it's been sitting around there for longer, for a couple of days, like best valued altcoin and that no one's talking about that will do great things and has great fundamentals like Dash, amazing. Stella XLM. Another example, one, two, three touches, four, five, six touches, breakout, back test, and then good price action to the upside. Haven't drawn the arc on this, but you can see it. There'll be a couple of touches there, then a couple of touches there. This is the back test on the right hemisphere, and then it doesn't need to touch that right hemisphere of the arc anymore. Long term uptrend line in play. You know, we can always dip back here for a little bit of support, but I don't think it needs to. I think once again, it's done its reach down. It's done its kind of back test of the arc. I guess, you know, if we want to, if we want to kind of draw it, we can do that. Where are we? Brush. Touch, 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 touch. You know, that's our arc. We've, we've touched off it now and now it just needs to kind of go parabolic to the upside. Once again, altcoin that's been in the top 10 for a while top 20 for a long time you know been pushed down the ranks it wants to claim it back you know you got to think about this like if you were an altcoin you know like if you think about an altcoin as a person you know if you've been in power and you've been in the game and you've been up there for a while all through the bear market you've been there with your market cap and then all these new coins come along and bust you out of the way you know especially a little dogecoin and all that you know, are you gonna are you gonna take that? Are you gonna stand for that? You know, like these altcoins are gonna come back hard and they're gonna come back with a vengeance. And that's that's why I have a good proportion of my portfolio in altcoins that had a track record in the last bull market. You know, because the thing is that the the newer coins that have done really well recently, they don't have that track record to fall on. They don't have those long term resistance lines. They don't have those long term uptrend lines to hold them. They don't have the arcs to kind of support them. You know that it is all just it it, it is all just new money, weak hands. In, in reality, because um, you know, like you can say all you like, like you know you bought one harmony in March, and I'm not nothing against one harmony holders because I'm one of them and, and I will hold it to the very end no matter what happens because I do think there is more upside. But you've got to think of the, the general market that have bought it in low and had a really good run. At some point, there'll be boredom coming in and there's no one in there that's like, I've been one harmony for three years and I've held and I've held and I've held that have, that have built that solid base. I think you know, at that, you know, that one to two cent level maybe there is, but at this higher levels, you know, it's it's all kind of, you know, heavy FOMO, uh, you know, people that have had a good run. Same deal with, you know, you look at any coin that's had a great run, any DeFi coin, any any coin out there that's, you know, just seen absolutely parabolic rises and then it's kind of fallen over on itself. That's because, you know, they're new and they don't have the chart structure. They don't have the, you know, I guess the, the, the community, the investment, the long-term kind of bullish narrative surrounding them of you know their utility is the one and it's going to help whereas these you know the, these stalwarts like Stella, xrp dash you know they've been churning away doing things creating utility you know being used for utility um for a long time now you know like they're you know in, in the in the reality of the financial market xrp Stella, dash Bitcoin, Ethereum, they're being used every day. That's why they are strong and, and powerful and being used, you know, like, 
moving down to Cardano, it will be that way in the future, but it's not like it is being used on a daily basis in high volumes for, you know, for transactions, you know, the smart contracts aren't there. One Harmony, its network is just in the, the new new era, you know, the nascency. So you've got to remember that like as, as bullish and as future projection, projection there is and thought, you know, the, the ideas are there and the, you know, the platform and the roadmaps there, these coins that have the utility and that have a real kind of network and community will do well eventually, you know, it's just that they, they are laggard because their, their charts, you know, or their, you know, the people that buy and sell them or held them for a long time need to be sorted out, you know, the, the pecking order needs to be sorted out and they need to be in a position where they've tested and back tested and made sure that the people that are on the ride are the people that deserve to be on the ride. And so that the people that have got off the ride and want to get back on the ride have to pay a premium when the thing's running hard, right? So just think about it that way, you know, and it's, it's a, that's a, that's a little bit philosophical. That's a little bit, uh, you know, kind of alternative, but you know, there's, there's this, and, and once again, I, I recommend, and I highly recommend you to read any of Jim Rickard's books. You know, the, the market is a big thing, you know, it is, it is a big, it's a big, big thing, you know, and collectively it's all together, you know, and I think if you get hung up on an individual project and can it go there and why can it go there, it is just a big con conglomerate of people that the, 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 the money is moving from here to there and there and there. Sometimes new money comes in, but just in general, you need to sit in the right place with the right thesis and just wait for it to flow through your asset and then it's going to go to the next one, you know, and that's what inflates the market cap briefly and then pulls it back again because you'll see, and if you looked into the charts in detail, it's not like every single altcoin peaks on X date and then goes through the bear market and then the bottom is on X date. Yes, there's like events. Yes, there's events that are like black swans that you can see a dip in everything. And yes, there's like times where, you know, Bitcoin does things that cause events in everything like the recent dip where everything dips at the same time but over overall each individual project or coin has its own life cycle you know there's there's similar patterns in similar kind of styles but each each one has its own thing and they all fire at different times and to be chasing and to be wanting every single top in every coin and to buy every single bottom in every coin to sell every single top is is not is is unacceptable like you can't expect that you know it's it's nearly impossible you know unless you've got enough money to put a thousand dollars in every single project out there you know in somewhere in the bottom of the bear market and then yeah it's just you know it's it's impossible so what I, basically what i'm trying to say is that the altcoins that have been there the longest will probably end up blowing your mind the most maybe maybe not on a true percentage gain you know i know that there's things out there like theta and and same deal with one harmony where if you had a got it at 0.1 of a cent and held it till you know even sold it at 24 cents the percentage gains are huge but they're like the odd example what i'm talking about is that like you know if you've held xrp from 20 cents and accumulated at that level or 25 cents even at that level once you know it fires to the upside and it does its full extension you know whether it be 10 20 30 dollars whichever number you want to pick out of your hat it doesn't matter which one it is because they're all lots of profit and they're all amazing returns on investment for such a short period of time and they're ones that you can you know stand by for the long term because you know that if you hold an xrp if you hold a Bitcoin, if you hold an Ethereum, if, even if you hold a Cardano or a Stella or a Dash, that there is some kind of utility, there's some kind of value there, no matter what its US dollar value is, because you could swap that to somebody else to buy a good or service in some kind of market somewhere. You know, whereas a lot of other things out there, you're just trading them around. 
you're trading them in and out of dollars, you're trading them between each other and that they don't really have a value. They don't really do anything yet. You know, it is it, there is a lot more hopium in these new projects because it's all a roadmap, it's all an idea, it's all a bunch of investors that are hoping to cash out. And that's fine, you know, because that's also a way of making money, but I, I like and I like my bigger bags being you know, XRP, Dash, EOS, because long term value projects that are doing things that are part of the cryptocurrency infrastructure and network, you know, game credits, doing something, selling things, NF NFTs, in game items, you know, they're doing something every day of the week as a valid kind of token for transaction, right? So that's what that. That's, that's that's my thesis, you know, that's what I'm seeing. Indecision in the market and the market is ready to fire to the upside. It is, it is, you know, everything has had its back test. Everything it's, everything's, you know, had that sell off. Everything is ready to go boom. And I hope that you're holding and I hope you've held. And if you haven't, like there is still time, you know, things aren't firing any crazy amount of this is not a, it'll happen tomorrow kind of thing you know I'm on a weekly chart here you know it, it still has some work to break out again but these things when they fire when they break their most recent recent highs they're going to fly and they're going to fly hard and they're going to fly fast so if you're not in now you'll be chasing and your profit percentages diminish the longer you leave it I'm going to leave it there been Jared, it's been Crypto Plan. This is not financial advice. Please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, and please click the notification bell if you have stumbled across me as a new viewer. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.